She's Bangladesh, she's wanted to be billionaires. So freaking bad. They actually did it. Salman Fazur Rahman's net worth is currently valued at 1.5 billion. The white hipster bearded sporting businessman is the chairman of Bangladesh's largest corporate firm, Bexamco Group. His decisions directly affect the livelihood of his 48,000 blue and white collar employees. Bexamco factory workers make $110 a month on average, higher than Bangladesh's minimum wage of $43 a month. A full-time minimum wage worker in the US makes an average of $1,256 a month. Bexamco imports and exports crushed bones and seafood from France, Belgium, Britain, Germany, and the Netherlands. In case you were wondering, the bones aren't just being used for Halloween decorations. People use bone grist, which are bones crushed to about the size of rice grains, in the fabrication of activated carbon, matches, paint, abrasives, gelatin, which is used in candy, and glue. Salman calls his shots from the back of a two-tone $413,000 Mercedes Maybach S650. The obsidian black and chrome vehicle is easily recognized by its stately twin Bangladeshi flag sitting proudly on the hood. Quite appropriate for a man who is a cabinet minister, a member of the Jatia Sangrad, and serves as an advisor to the prime minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina. Back to the Maybach. This V12 model has supreme luxury and maximum security. Let's start with luxury. Each 20-hole forged wheel is worth $5,000. Just the two-tone paint alone is $12,000. The extended leather package is no less than $15,000. And you can see the Maybach difference when you get up close and personal with the fancy upholstery. When Salman wants to listen to some of hood billionaire Rick Ross's Maybach music when he rides, he can do so through its $6,000 Burmester 3D high-end sound system with about 20 four speakers spread out in the interior, complete with front and back tweeters that spin out. Well, that's pretty cool. Considering a home setup for a premium German-made Burmester can run you upwards of $130,000, putting one in the car is a much cheaper alternative. The flowing lines in the interior running across the dash adds $1,500 plus $8,500 for the extra comfy rear seat package, which comes with foot recliners as well as heated and cooling cup holders. If the sun is too bright and you forget your shades, just use the magic sky control feature to change how much light gets through the panoramic sunroof. Let's now talk about automotive security. This Maybach's been modified to be bulletproof. Some of the insides have been scooped out to be outfitted with ballistic steel. Same deal for Salman's other cars, a $96,000 BMW 740LE and his $94,050 Toyota Land Cruiser Prado. Can't be too careful in the crowded streets of Dhaka. It's not all smooth sailing financially. Salman has a property in Damundi for which construction was halted due to 2.28 billion takas or 26.5 million US dollars in unpaid loans attributed to the billionaire's name. The house went up for auction and the debt was to GMG Airlines, to whom he owned 50% in shares. When he wasn't in their black books, Salman got to fly around in a $6,750,000 Bombardier Dash 8, one of the safest jets you can fly in. International media publication Forbes doesn't recognize any Bangladeshi as being billionaires, as wealth is difficult to assess in developing countries from the outside. However, it seems as though everybody in the know knows who in Bangladesh has deep pockets. Businessman, CEO, and chairman of the Datco Group, Musa bin Shamsher, has a fortune estimated at $1.5 billion. He carries the nickname Prince Musa, and it's widely known he's an international arms trader, dealing in fighter planes and tanks, as well as the trafficking of migrant workers. He has sent an estimated 30 million Bangladeshi workers to work abroad. Prince Musa's cravat budget is worth noting as extra fat Hermes ties are $220 a piece, and when he rocks it in the pocket, matching Hermes pocket squares are $170. Like the Hitman series games' is Agent 47, he only wears red ties. In the West, we have Mr. Porter's best dressed men, your Josh O'Connors, your Jeremy O'Harris's, your Evan Mox. In Southeast Asia, Musa bin Shamsher has been named Bangladesh's best dressed man with $5,000 to $6,000 suits. That's pretty expensive considering a high-end Tom Ford suit will run you $2,600. To spend the amount that Prince Musa claims to on suits, you'd have to go to H. Huntsman or suitmaker John Green for a bespoke suit in something like Super 100 wool. 
It's been said that Musa bin Shamsher has never been seen wearing the same suit twice. If he does in fact wear each suit only once and wear suits every day, that's over $2 million on threads he burns through every single year. We do know that he has hundreds of suits. What's more impressive is that instead of electronic sliding closet doors, the tycoon has servants there to open his closet doors for him. And shoes. Woo! In terms of what American Christians might call church-going shoes, he has a collection he keeps in briefcases. It rivals the sneakerhead collections of American rappers and sports stars, and is who knows how much they cost, but I'm dying to know diamond shoes give him a leg up on Macklemore's $8,000 Air Jordan 1, the Legends of Summer edition, and his ultra-rare $1.2 million signed Air Jordan 6 PE cleats. Or a foot up, I should say. On top of that, the prince says he rarely ever walks on the streets, making sure his precious foot clothes stay pristine. Prince Musa hangs his suits in a palace that looks like it belongs in a level in a Hitman video game. Prince Musa Palace, or the Palace Daka, is heavily guarded by men in military gear. The palm tree and shrouded property has painted ceilings like the Sistine Chapel, golden leather chairs, stained glass windows, and a three-story chandelier. The man who has been described in the press as hideously rich has pictures of himself all over the walls, so you never forget whose house it is. If you studied economics in school, they used to say, if you don't get a job after you graduate, at least you'll be able to explain why. Luckily for Prince Musa, he never had to explain that, as the graduate of California State University with a PhD in economics always found ways to make money. The income gap is extreme in Bangladesh, with 90% of Bangladeshis living under the poverty line. At the other extreme, you have Prince Musa's fingers, adorned with a unique 16-carat $1 million ruby, a $100,000 emerald, a $50,000 ruby, and a $50,000 diamond ring. A pen can be mightier than the sword, but Prince Musa's pen is definitely more valuable than most. It's a $1 million Mont Blanc custom job. The 24 karat gold pen's been encrusted with 75,000 diamonds. It's about the third most expensive pen ever sold in the world, just behind the $1.4 million Mont Blanc Bohème Royal pen and the $7.9 million Fulgor Nocturnus pen by Tibaldi. A one-of-a-kind $5 million custom Rolex keeps his wrist on freeze, the crown jewel of his 20-plus Piaget, Rolex, and Tissot luxury watch collection. He even once gifted a Cartier Santos wristwatch as a gift to reporter Christopher Erickson for interviewing him, worth an estimated $12,000. Pretty good parting gift. The diamonds don't stop there. He has diamonds on his wrist cuffs and diamonds on his belt buckle. Daily dinner time for the entrepreneur gives the fictional Downton Abbey gang a run for its money, as 20 to 30 prepared dishes are there for choosing, buffet style, with servants on standby for anything he needs, including fanning him and brushing his hair while his wife Fanny's Fatima feeds him. That's not exclusive to all billionaires, that's just this guy. In the dining room, it's the golden chairs and cups that really remind you that some people live in another reality. He used to bathe in rose water. If four ounces of rose water is $9, then a 42 gallon rose water bath would cost him over $10,000. He says he doesn't do it anymore though, as it got to be a little excessive, even for him. His car is slightly less opulent than you'd expect. He rides in the backseat of a $66,500 Mercedes-Benz E250. You'd expect an S-Class from him at least, but he does ride around in a motorcade. Pretty dope. You know what he doesn't spend money on? Taxes. Death and taxes are certain for most people, not Mr. Musa. He admittedly pays very little tax. Tariq Rahman has a fortune estimated at $1.5 billion. He's a Bangladeshi politician and the current vice chairman of the Bangladesh National Party, or BNP. He established much of his wealth from his father, Zia Ur Rahman, who served as the seventh president of Bangladesh in 1977 and was assassinated on May 30, 1981, in Chittagong in an army coup d'etat. Tariq's mother, Khalida Zia, also served as the first ever female prime minister of Bangladesh from 1991 to 1996, and again from 
2001 to 2006. She is still alive but was sentenced to five years in jail in 2018 for corruption and embezzlement of $252,000. His younger brother, Arafat Coco Rahman, tragically died of cardiac arrest in 2004. So needless to say, it's been a wild ride for the Pakistani-born billionaire. This child of a Bangladeshi spends a lot of his wealth on lawyer fees. He has been charged with corruption as he was sentenced to life in prison but hasn't served a lot of time. He got bail in 2008 and moved to the UK. He currently resides in London, England, where he rents a lovely $2 million Kingston area home. He cruises around the London streets in an obsidian black Lexus GS430, which MSRP'd for $55,675 at the time of release. He also drives the Familia around in a mayonnaise-colored $101,000 premium trim Cadillac Escalade. With $1.5 billion available, though, I'd go the extra mile and get a caviar-colored $85,000 2002 Lexus LS500 and a Summit White $106,000 2002 Escalade 600. Back in the day, his father rode around in a Mercedes four-cylinder 200cc when he was the Army Chief of Staff, while his mother likes to ride in the back seat of an English White $550,000 Rolls-Royce Phantom. Shajib Ahmed Wazed, also known as Shajib Ahmed Joy, is a Bangladeshi-American IT consultant and a political campaigner worth a little over a billion. This is another descendant of a Bangladeshi political dynasty. He is the son of Sheikh Hasina Wazed, the current PM of Bangladesh, and his grandfather, Sheikh Mujid Ur Rahman, was the first and former president of Bangladesh, having served from 1971 until his assassination in 1975. I mean, we all know consultants can be over paid, but Sajib is on another level. He's the IT policy analyst for the Bangladeshi government and has helped establish a more digital Bangladesh. It is a bit of a stretch to imagine digitalizing a country where many residential areas don't have uninterrupted electricity supplied to them, and this has made Sajib a controversial and heavily criticized public figure. The one accomplishment he claims made him rich is almost physically impossible. The Hunter Biden of Bangladesh, in the sense that he's the son of the country's highest holder of office, got a pretty fancy American in education. The college man got his Bachelor's of Science in Computer Science at the University of Texas at Arlington, which would cost an out-of-state student $44,369 for each of these four years, plus about $20,000 in books, food, and on-campus living expenses. His Master's in Public Administration came from Harvard University, which would have cost his family an estimated $92,011 per year when you factor in tuition, living expenses, and books. He founded and chairs the U.S.-based firm Wazed Consulting, Inc., and lives close to where he works in the wealthy suburb of Falls Church, Virginia, 8,026 miles from his Dhaka birthplace. He bought a brand new four-bedroom, 4.5-bath, single-family home in 2006 for $996,875 on Bell Manor Street, as well as a second home on Martin Street in Alexandria, Virginia for $749,000, although that residence may have been sold. Sim Simma, who got the key to Joyce Bima? He drives an upper echelon 7 Series BMW. Since he's basically royalty, we bet it's somewhere along the lines of a $157,000 V12 powered BMW M760i X Drive. That Charlie Brown zigzag stitching on the leather interior gently whispers, Billionaire. Sayed Abul Hussein is a Bangladeshi businessman slash politician with an estimated net worth of a cool billion dollars, making him the fifth richest Bangladeshi person in the world. He is currently a member of the BAL and serves as a member of Bangladeshi parliament, and he's been there since 1991. The Deshar village Madrapur native makes $90,000 a month as a politician and lives in a glorious residence estimated to be worth about $10 million. What stands out about the home is it has shade control. You you can open the hand-stitched blackout curtains with the touch of a button. We don't know how much cash Ahmed Akbar Sobahan officially has, but we do know his company, the Bashantara Group, controls an astounding 50,000 crore, or 5.884 billion U.S. dollars in assets. It's estimated that he himself is worth about $500 million. Of course, we know it's not quite a billion, but we included him and a few other multimillionaires on this list because of relative wealth. Remember in Kanye West's song So Appalled when Pusha T rapped, success is what you make it, take it how it come, a half a million twenties like a billion where I'm from. 
Being a poor youth in New York's Bronx looking at $500,000 in $20 bills feels similar to being a factory worker making $43 a month and looking at Ahmad Akbar's Rolls Royce Ghost. When you don't have a savings account, a $313,000 motor car seems almost impossible. He also cruises around in a boxy $156,000 Mercedes-Benz G-Class SUV and occasionally in a bulky $41,000 Hummer H3. Remember in 50 Cent's song, I Get Money, the Billion Dollar Remix, featuring Diddy when he rapped, Man, they're trying to buy some Gucci. I'm trying to buy them all. I ain't came to get a little bit, I came to get it all. Ahmed probably remembers as he was inspired to have the $100 million Bashandera shopping mall built. He carried that sentiment over to the world of football as he is part owner of the Abahani Limited Dhaka Football Club, where Salman F. Rahman serves as president, and he owns shares in the Sheikh Jamal Damundi Club as well. And lastly, remember when Jay-Z rapped on the Can I Live freestyle? I don't give a you-know-what about cars and chrome rims. I got apartments you could put your home in. That idea is carried through in Ahmed's home address. Unofficial heliport on the front lawn for his private helicopter, along with a full-size regulation soccer field with enough room for two more make this place one of a kind. Palm trees surround the massive front yard, and the stately front entrance has White House-esque pillars in the front, making the three-story home the epitome of Bangladeshi magnificence. And when Mr. Saban has to go further than the helicopter's 450-mile flight range, it's the $1.89 million Seagup J Diamond D jet for he and his Bashandera group associates and partners. The richest minister in Bangladesh is Dr. Mahyafin Khan Al-Majir, worth an estimated $400 million. The Minister of the Ministry of Home Affairs got his doctorate in economics and made much of his wealth when his party, the Awami League, came to power in Bangladesh. The Boston University graduate was also the chairman of Farmers Bank Limited while he was a minister, where he exerted influence over their $274.3 million in assets. He's probably the richest writer in Bangladesh as well, as he published a memoir entitled My Days in Jail, where he detailed the brutal conditions he endured while incarcerated in 2002 without ever having been a officially charged. He sold out three editions of his book. He's no Stephen King, whose $500 million net worth is mostly due to his writing, but it's still worth noting, as is that he spent a total of 13 years of his 79-year-old life incarcerated. Ziasuddin al Makmun is a Bangladeshi businessman who, at his peak in the early 2000s, had 45 bank accounts and was worth around $250 million. The wealth we could trace was due partially to his close relationship with Tariq Rahman, who was his business partner and friend, and the rest due to profits he made on the sale of concrete poles to the Bangladesh Rural Electrification Board through his company, Kamba Limited. Right now, his assets are on freeze as he has actually been incarcerated since 2007. His lifestyle consists of being counted, staring for long periods of time, and waiting to be fed. Not the typical day in a multimillionaire's life. Gladusin is in his 15th year in the slammer for his corruption conviction and has five more to go. How much is he worth now? We'll have to see in 2027 when he gets out. If something like an 8th gen $535,000 Rolls Royce Phantom picks him up, you just know he has a handsome little sum stashed away somewhere in a DACA bank. As many as 13,881 new millionaires have been made in Bangladesh in 2021 despite the COVID-19 pandemic, or maybe because of it, pushing the grand total number of millionaires in the South Asian country to 99,918. Look for a few more members of Bangladesh's 168 million plus population to become billionaires in the next couple of years. It's all looking pretty good for the super wealthy.